Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're going to talk about five ways to make getting started on keto easier. Let's get fat adapted right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about five ways to make getting started on keto easier. Because let's face it, I am not interested in making things more difficult. Life is hard enough. That's for sure. And let's face it, a lot of times people look at the keto lifestyle and are like, this is really complicated. There's too much to have to worry about and I can't do that. But if you follow these five simple steps, you're going to have no problem starting on your keto journey. You do not need a culinary degree to nope. go keto. You do not need to start your own farm. That's for sure. And I have proven that you do not need to be a mathematician. Definitely not. So let's get started with number one. And number one is going to be find a program that you can follow. There are plenty of programs out there on the internet. And a great one that's actually free is the Perfect Keto 30-Day Kickstart program. I like free. <laughs> I really like free. The 30-day program, I'm going to leave a link for it down below. There's um, a 30-day guide for assessments that will help you determine like what some good exercises you can do are if you want to exercise. It will go over assessing like what kind of foods you like, help you make decisions on what you can and can't eat when you go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. It'll even give you assessments on making some meal plans so that you can be ready to go throughout the day. And there's a lot of commonly asked questions answered from their Keto Answers book, yeah. which is a very handy resource. Yeah, there's a bunch of videos where Dr. Anthony actually sits down and they're all quick, like two or three minutes, like, what are ketones? Should I follow net carbs or total carb? Yeah, because let's face it, we all have very common questions when we're starting keto and he just handles the highlights. Yeah. Now the best part about the entire program is there are actually two different 10 day contests in it where they're going to pick winners based on how well you've done over the 30 day program. And that is free to enter also. Yeah. Now they do have a paid version and that's going to include some personalized meal plans, but you don't need that. They have a complete free 30 day assessment that you can follow and that'll help you really get started. Again, I like free. So number two, keep keto simple by getting rid of temptations. That's a good one. I have trouble with nuts. I'm nuts about them. <laughs> So especially after the holidays when I'm trying to get back into a stricter regimen, I just don't buy loose nuts. We can't have them rolling around in here. I will eat them and I know it. Yeah. now in addition to like watching the things that are keto friendly, like nuts or cheese or something like that, you also want to go through your pantry if at all possible and get rid of all of the carby sugary snacks. Things like potato chips, cookies, popcorn, Anything that might tempt you, you know, if you've got a bunch of oils that you don't want to eat anymore, yeah. get rid of them. Either donate them to food banks if you want or just throw them out, but get them out of your pantry. Now, I know there may be some of you who can't because maybe there's somebody in your life that isn't like following a ketogenic lifestyle, like your children or your spouse or something like that. In that case, what I would tell you is find an area of the pantry to mark it as that's their area or find an area of the pantry and say, that's my area. Put a label on it if you have to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have a son that is not keto. And so he has a space in our pantry and also in our fridge. And we just know that's his stuff. Treat it like you would a work fridge, right? People bring in lunches. They're not your lunches. And there's no way that you would touch their lunch, right? So just think of it that way. And that way you can cohabitate without diving into that food that you don't want to be eating. Yeah, and if you even have the opportunity to, I would say put it in a different area. Like if you've got like two different pantries or if you've got two different cabinets, make one cabinet your cabinet and one cabinet the non-keto food cabinet. This way, when you're going to get something for yourself, you're not even seeing it because you're opening up a cabinet that only has stuff for yourself. So number three, 
Keep your food simple, especially in the beginning. Now is not the time to start experimenting with extravagant recipes like how do I make beef wellington a keto or how do I make you know General Sal's chicken. You want to keep your food very simple in the beginning. Bacon and eggs work. Hamburger works cheeseburgers work just keep it simple yeah keep it really really simple and if you do need some kind of like sweet treat maybe you're trying to wean yourself off of sweet treats and you don't want to eat regular chocolate or cookies or things like that i highly advise even staying away from a lot of the keto baked um, recipes like even ours like the cookies and things like that find the simpler fat bomb recipes mm -hmm. like we have a great recipe i will leave a link for it down below for a cookie dough and what that's going to allow you to do is have a little sweet treat, but it's mostly fat. And the fat will help satiate you to get you through to your next meal. But don't make like a bunch of like cookies or cakes or things like that, because most likely you're going to overdo it and that's going to overdo your carbs. So number four is use a tracking program. We like chronometer. I mean, if you need to start out, just begin writing down everything that you eat in a journal and track it that way. But if you'd like to take it to the next level, Chronometer is a free service that we enjoy. Yeah, Chronometer is a great tracking app and there are other ones out there like MyFitnessPal and Carb Manager. Uh, we prefer Chronometer. We actually have a video on exactly how to use it. I'm gonna leave a link for that right over Rachel's head. But like we say in that video, the biggest reason that I like Chronometer is it gives you a lot of stuff for free. They have a paid version, but you don't need it unless you really want to avoid all of the ads or you want to be able to share your custom foods and recipes with other people. But it gives you a lot of information and it will really help you stay on track. So number five is meal prep and meal plan. Because you do not want your emotions and your hormones governing your menu. Yeah, at the beginning of the week, simply sit down and get a rough idea of what you wanna eat. If you're planning on eating hamburgers or some casseroles or ground beef or sausages, make it all up You know, at the beginning of the week or maybe on Monday and then again on Thursday, enough for two or three days, and then divide it up. What that's gonna make it easy to do is grab and go. Now when you come home and it's eight o'clock at night and you haven't had a chance to cook dinner, there's a good chance that you will be able to grab something out of the refrigerator other than ordering takeout or stopping at McDonald's or something like that. It makes your meal plan non-negotiable and it's gonna save you a ton of money. And since we're using Chronometer to track our food, you can make it even easier by just putting everything you're gonna eat in there for two to three days ahead of time. Now you've got like a checklist and that'll help you from going off plan because what you can do is in the morning wake up you're gonna look at your checklist and say this is what I get to eat for the day if you eat it all at nine o'clock in the morning or if you eat it all at nine o'clock at night when the list has been completed you're done eating that's all she wrote and finally we have a bonus one so this would be number six don't panic definitely don't panic we all have slip-ups don't worry about it if you put a little bit of too much of heavy cream in your coffee don't freak out about it. Maybe you grab a cookie that you thought was keto friendly and it's not, it's not a big deal. Get back on the wagon the very next meal, not the next day. Yeah, remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. That's why we call it the keto lifestyle, not the keto diet. <laughs> So those are five ways that'll help make staying on keto easier, plus the bonus one of don't panic. And if you can think of something else that's made your keto journey easier up to this point, leave that tip in the comments below. So that is our video for today. Please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.